Connors T, how are ye? Welcome to the Candle of Tales podcast. We are breathing life back into Irish myths with traditional Irish storytelling accompanied by music. My name is Sarika, and this week we have a live telling of the story of the Far Darug by Aaron, the other co-founder of Candlelit Tales and my little brother. We're back in lockdown here in Ireland, but we're available for private online bookings. So drop us a line if you'd like to find out more about that. Stay tuned till the end of the podcast to hear our latest news. We wouldn't be able to continue to make these podcasts without the support of our patrons, which we are very grateful for. So thank you. If you'd like to contribute, you can chip in a few bob at patreon.com forward slash candlelit tales or share, subscribe, like or leave a review if you like what we do. It all makes a difference. Now sit back and listen to this week's story. Take it away, Aaron. The Far Darug. Now he is known as the Trickster. And, <laughs> well, you might see him standing there serene and obscure from view, staring between the flames in you. But he might not always cast the nice trick. He's the one of the nasty joke. And he could even steal your child and replace it with a lump of wood. He was also known for taking anything you wanted the most. Any fortune, any love, any lover. Well, he was the one that you wouldn't want to come near you. And well, one the uh, Hone, he came to a known woman of a town, Mrs. Madigan was her name. And she had just had a baby boy. And the fire darrow crept with joy, bounding down the hill towards Mrs. Madigan's home. <laughs> and there he spied the little child inside the window, left open. He peered inside and didn't spy a daddy's sock or a, a nail of iron or any other thing to ward him off. And so he crept along and inside. He caught the child, pulled him back, and with the other hand, he threw in an unwanted fay. One of the creatures of the other world, one of the descendants of the two a day, this little unwanted fay, a changeling, he landed, the fire darrow disappeared, vanished out the window in a puff of smoke, bringing the child away with him, stolen away. Underneath the hill, they say, he is, maybe even till this day. And inside the window of Mrs. Madigan, this fay was left all alone. <laughs> he disguised himself, weak and in the form of a body, to still resemble the child Mrs. Madigan had had only those short few weeks ago. But... As the morning crept on and Mrs. Madigan went on down the stairs, she opened the door to a cry she had heard no time before. She walked forwards and saw her lovely child shrieking all alone and with a strange wizened look behind his eyes. The cackles, the cries, they went on all day, and the following night straight through, nothing she did for him could cure him or aid him or stop him from this wailing. He ate and he ate and he ate, and he continued to eat some more, and he kept on eating, the entire larder, but he didn't grow fat, he just kept on wailing. It was the only time he wasn't wailing was when he was eating, actually. It was at least a bit of a reprieve for Mrs. Madigan, who was going, at this stage, fucking mental. She couldn't sleep. This child was just keeping her up all night. It wasn't very enjoyable for Mrs. Madigan. The townspeople began to talk, as they would. People were stubbing their toe. Milk was going sour all over the town. Bad luck was spreading. And people began to talk of that strange little ugly child belonging to Mrs. Madigan. So, well, people began to call for Grey Ellen. Grey Ellen came to the town and walked up the long road to Mrs. Madigan's home and knocked on the door. 
she opened to it, and to see the strange old grey hag Ekaliak, a well-known woman that could see between the veil and know and recognize the things you should do to cure those affected by the fae. This Kaliak had strange, long, mane-like hair, greasy skin, molded and blotched and well muddy and well with warts all over, growing warts themselves, crooked teeth that hung out at angles with moss-like mildew on it, dripping often. Her knees bent around and her ankles pointed and at the below of her skirts you could see the very ends of her pubic hair out there sticking out. When Mrs. Madigan said, hello, how are you? Grey Ellen said, you have a, a fairy in your house. <laughs> Here's what you do. And she told Miss Madigan just what to do. Now, she was a bit creeped out with this whole situation, but she listened to this old hag who told her that if she had a fairy in her house, she had to make a brewery of eggshells. Now, this meant she had to crack six eggs and throw the eggs away and put the eggshells into a boiling pot of water. And the boiling pot of water must be on the stove in full view and in full sight of the child, who Grey Ellen suspected was in fact a changeling. Now, <coughs> Mrs. Madigan did this. She cracked six eggs, threw the eggs away, and threw the eggshells into the boiling water, and made sure it was in full view of the child who was strangely calling and asking her what she was doing. Mammy, what are you doing? Now, Mrs. Madigan definitely knew that her child couldn't talk five weeks ago. Mammy! So the possibility of this child actually being a fairy was beginning to dawn on her. The penny was beginning to drop. Then she realized she'd better buy some time because, well, the second thing Mrs. Madigan had said to her was when the fairy reveals itself to you, stoke a hot poker in the fire. Make it red hot. Walk towards the child and bury that poker down deep inside the throat of that changeling. Only if you do this will your stolen child be given back to you. Miss Madigan wasn't mad about that part. But when she heard the fairy talking again. Mammy, what are you doing with that poker? She decided she go for it. She stirred those eggs and left them alone as she grabbed the poker uh, to turn around and ask the child, Oh, is it wondering what it is that I'm doing <laughs> that you're wondering? Yeah, what are you doing? Feed me. Well, I'm making a brewery of, of eggshells, my darling. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Well, at this stage, Mrs. Madigan was walking slowly towards her child and, and she tried to envisage holding I'll the child's throat and ramming I'll that hot poker her. down its throat. And she stripped and she fell. And that poker went skidding across the floor, landing below the window that was wide open, she realized. A gust of wind blew in. She ran towards the poker and happier little cry, a gurgle if you will, came from the cot. And she looked down and she saw it was in fact her own baby boy returned to her with joy. And out the window she swear she could hear a cackler of laughter. She shut the window and made sure that from that night forward her baby boy would sleep with an iron nail below its pillow. <laughs> this podcast was produced and edited by Oshin Ryan, with story by Aaron Hegarty and live music by Oshin Ryan and Alan Homan. You can find out more about us and book a private show on our website candlelittales.ie. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Candlelit Tales, 
and for videos and live streams, like and subscribe to our Candlelit Tales YouTube channel, which now has Candlelit Tales for kids. Hashtag Candlelit Tales. Liking and subscribing to our channels really helps us grow and get to more people. And if you're able to give us more direct support, you can chip in a few bob at patreon.com forward slash Candlelit Tales or make a one-time donation through the PayPal button on our website. We would love to hear back from you with any questions you may have, so please contact us directly or leave your question in the comments section below. Because what we really want to do is get these stories out there, share them with as many people as possible. And so anything you can do to help, we really appreciate. And we especially appreciate you listening.